it's Jordan Leroy Hansen, also known as Ledep. And I'm here with a MDG Arena deck tech. And for this deck tech, I kind of wanted to brew around a card that I actually, way while back, I was able to get the Japanese War Spark promo of it. Which specifically for this deck is Vraska Swarm's Imminence. Now, Vraska Swarm's Imminence is a 4 cost uncommon planeswalker from the War of the Spark. It has the ability that whenever a creature you control with a Death Touch deals damage to a player or planeswalker, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. And a negative two to create a one one black assassin creature token with Death Touch, and whenever this creature deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. In other words, the token's pretty nifty, so I was kind of wanting to do kind of like a Death Touch kind of tribal brew. And the way I kind of approached it is I kind of did a kind of a hodgepodge of some deck ideas, but mostly this is like a, com a combination of Gagari Adventures with kind of like the Death Touch synergy. So, because lucky enough, Falmire Knight is a Death Toucher, which we need for the Death Touch tribal deck, and it also has the Adventure, which allows for card draw, which is very nifty. So, pretty much then, I decided to put in Edgewall Innkeeper as a semi-draw engine. I put it in as a free of, since we have another method to draw cards into our deck. But still, essentially, with Falmire Knight, as well as Midnight Reaper, as well as a two of Order of Midnight, it kind of gives us a sub, a pretty much a sub-adventure package, which we can use as a basic draw engine. Plus, also bring stuff from our graveyard to essentially benefit the deck design. Also, in the one drop, I put in Knight of the Even Legion, because it's one of the best black one drops in the game. Besides the kitty, of course, but... Really good one drop, just the ability for it to be pumped and get bigger and bigger and bigger can be a very, very scary threat if you don't deal with it. I also put in Order or Midnight, as I mentioned before, just as a good way to complement the adventure package, as well as that sorcery spell. Really nice to bring back stuff since there's stuff that's going to die, since, well, we're pretty much running a lot of Death Touch and we're kind of a defensive deck in a sense. Orzhov Enforcer is also our 2-drop Death Touch, just a really good 2-drop Death Touch creature. The Afterlife ability is very nice, gets us a token, which we can use either for defensive or aggressive purposes. I put a 2 of Assassin's Trophy in here. This is our basic removal for the deck. We also have that as well as the free of Mid Murderous Rider, just a really, really good card. Helps us mostly remove mo most of the problematic effects, as well as a 1 of Casualties of War, because... Well, we're running green and black, we might as well run this because it helps us against some really annoying targets. We also put a Midnight Reaper as a card draw engine, since stuff are going to die because Death Touch shenanigans, so allows us to get card draw. We also put in Cresting Beast, since it's one of the best Death Touch creatures in the deck. Just all that flavor text, 4-4, four, four, Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste. Can't be blocked by creatures with power to or less. Combo damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. And whenever this deals combat damage to an opponent, if it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker, that player controls. There's actually a fun synergy with this card, Requesting Beasts and Frasca Swarm Enemies. As you notice that pretty much the static effect on Frasca, whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals damage to a player or a Planeswalker, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. So if this uh, Planeswalker is out, as well as Cresting Beast, what happens is if the opponent has a Planeswalker, we just do direct combat damage to the opponent's face, that gets a counter on it, as well as deals damage to the Planeswalker, which then puts a Nadif counter on it. So, that's just like a quick way to make it into a sit sit with all that, which is legit scary. Also, the other Planeswalker we're running in the deck that's a really good, pretty much really good Planeswalker in general, like it's pretty high price at the moment, it's Vivian's Arcboil Ranger, just a really good Planeswalker. The fact that can we distribute two counters among creatures in control and make them gain trample is very relevant in this deck because, to put it bluntly, one thing that people might not know who are new to magic and such, the interaction with trample and death touch is actually a very nice interaction because what happens is, let's say your opponent blocks with a creature you th that you're attacking with death touch and it has trample, all you have to do is just deal one point of damage to the opponent's creature to kill it, which then lets your remaining damage go through. Case in point, let's say we put the two counters on Questing Beast, it's a Sit Sits with Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste, and Trample, thanks to Vivian, then it just deals one damage to the creature that's blocking it, and then it will deal the remaining five Trample damage, which is very relevant. It's a very absurd ability. As a one of in the deck, I put God Eternal Ronas, mostly because it's a... If we're doing Death Touch Tribal, kind of makes sense. 
synergizes with Vivian pretty well, especially if we can give it Trample and such. And the ability of it just to be a big, if we have a decent mid-range to wide board state to make it pump all our creatures and just swing in with Vigilance, very nice. It's also a recurring threat because when it dies, we can just shuffle it into our graveyard. Now, on the top end, these are more experimental cards, so keep that in mind. You could probably cut them out to mostly put in either another Midnight Reaper or Questing Beast and such, mostly the artifacts. The Great Hand is just in there because it's also another good draw engine. I also noticed we've been losing a lot of life, so I figured one of Great Hands to help us both be a really good mana rock, another card draw engine, and the gaining life is very relevant. And the one that's more debatable, even though I know many people who debate about the quality of this card, the Cauldron of Eternity, pretty much this spell costs two less for each creature card in your graveyard. Whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of the Onus Rybury, and then it has a reanimate ability. Honestly, our creatures are going to die a lot in this deck, and I figured this ability is to be able to reanimate, say, like a Questing Beast, or do a combat trick where the opponent feel like they can attack in, we... Oh no, wait, cast a sorcery. Well, still, being able to reanimate our Death Touch creatures to help us be defensive, very nice. Also, I just like it as a recursive engine with the Great Hinge, because it's like, our creatures die, we draw cards, then we draw cards, and then just kind of like a recurred Death Touch kind of wall situation. The one card that's a no-brainer in this deck, and you could probably cut one of the art, the legendary artifacts, but it's second of in, is Liliana Dreadhorde General. Just a really good six-cost Planeswalker. Whenever a creature we control dies, we draw a card, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Each player sacrifices two creatures, negative four. And if we can get to the ultimate, we pretty much win the game. Now, for our lands, we put in two castle luck frames, five swamps, six forests, four overgrown tombs, four temple of maladies, two fabled passages, and one's Karn Bastion. The reason why we put one Karn's Bastion is kind of twofold. One, there are a lot of ways that we get our creatures to have counters, whether it's Vivian or with Frasca's static effect. So being able to get our creatures bigger is very nice, as well as pretty much uh, Knight of Eben Legion. Also, it helps us if we have Frasca on the battlefield to put more counters on it with Proliferate. That way we can create more assassin tokens and such, and it kind of synergizes like that. Now, for our sideboard. For our sideboard, we have Free Duress, mostly just to help against the... Uh, Pretty much anything that's using a lot of either enchantments or artifacts, mostly um, Fires of Invention shenanigans. Legion's in, mostly if we go against kind of like a token-based aggro deck, not just grass, pretty much anything green, which is a lot of popular green decks, and also goes targets Nissa and Teferi. The Elder Spell, if we go against the Fires of Invention Super Frenzy type of build. Frashing Bronchodon, same freeing, Fires of Invention. Landline the Void, mostly this is our card to help us fight against the food, cat, pretty much Cauldron Familiar style decks. And Elkham Adversary is our creature, which is just a nice one if we go against a green deck as well. It has Death Touch as well, and that ability to also draw additional card is just very nice. Also, one nifty thing, thanks to the, having a few creatures in the sideboard, we do have the ability to, if we have enough loyalty on Vivian, to just pull that sideboard card out of our sideboard, if absolutely necessary. Nevertheless, that is the deck. Let us play a touching death against some opponents, shall we? We'll do one standard rank play and then one traditional standard play. Mostly I just want to show off kind of like how this deck works against like one-on-one -on -one matches. And then I also want to show how it works against a traditional standard match. So, first let's do our quick one-on-one, uh, -on -one, see how it does. Okay, so we take a look at this hand. Hmm. We don't have any of our one-drops, but we have Assassin's Trophy. We have an Order of Midnight. I think we still keep because we could just use the Order of Midnight to be a little aggressive. That either speaks a lot of fiends. It could be Gruul, it could be Mono Red. We don't really know yet. The fact that we see a second mountain though screams mono red. Yeah, mono red bird. This is the one matchup where we do have a little. See, this is how bad the cauldron decks are getting. The factor that mono red is playing card in the great creator. That should tell you how obnoxious the cauldron familiar decks have been. That's kind of hilarious. Anyway, we're gonna play an order of midnight. <laughs> Oh, 
Unfortunately for our opponent, we are not playing the mono red decks uh, or playing the nauseous or cauldron familiar shenanigans, so that strategy does not work. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is play the innkeeper. Play out... Yeah, I think I'm going to play out the death touch. Because either way, we're just going to get card draw out of it. There we go, we draw into a murderous rider so we don't have to worry about aggressive. Okay, so we got two cauldrons, or two, that's really nice. We'll swing in one of with this. And honestly, we're gonna pass the turn and just hold up an assassin's trophy. Just so when they play their Karn, we can just, wait. How did they exile their Karn again? Oh, yeah, because they weren't able to play it because... Oh. Okay, seven red mana. Is this a Dragosep deck? No, this is a... Well... Okay, so yeah, we're going to swip in that. Okay, that's going to be a problem. Okay, so it's kind of like a big red deck. Misconception. Okay, we're going to put this in tap. We're going to play out the Murderous Raider. Mostly because we get the card draw. And if it doesn't die, then we can get some little life gain, which is going to help us against this minimal life loss that we're going to go. This is... <laughs> you know... It's saying something when the Cauldron decks are so popular that Karn the Great Greater is seeing a lot of main board play. If that doesn't tell you anything about this local meta, <laughs> that's saying something. Okay, yeah, the God Pharaohs, as we suspected. So, we're gonna play Temple of Malady. We'll keep the land on top. We're gonna swing like this mostly because if they draw land they're going to play the god pharaoh statue and we're going to have to use the assassin's trophy uh, yeah So it's like mono, it's like big red, mono big red with Karn the Great Creator and the sh really good genre. That's actually an interesting deck design. I'm not going to lie about that. Still, it is kind of amusing to see Cauldron scene play again. So yeah, it's big red. Okay. So, they haven't seen anything yet of the... There we go. We draw a card from that, which is nice. Lucky enough with these Murderous Riders, they're giving us manual life gain to help us against the negative one effect of Shauna's Awakened Infernal, so... Okay, they're gonna light up the stage. They get themselves a Bone Crusher Giant, potentially, in a land. Are they gonna Bone Crusher Giant... The Falmire, they probably do it to the Innkeeper because they think that's our primary card draw engine. Makes perfect sense. Ooh, actually, yeah, we are playing Vivian. We're at a plus one. We're going to target this, target this. Then we can play out the knight, because we are going to, without a sweat, get more than four damage. We don't need a second. Well, actually, we're going to hold on that, just in case if our opponent has a way to remove the Vivian. I don't think they do, but you never know. And unless the opponent got something, I think we got this game. Though this is still a really cool deck design. Kind of like Big Red with Karn and just Chandra and the Regulator. 
This is a really cool deck design. Though, okay, it's the ones with your opponent's control, so yeah, the regulator still works. That's actually a really cool design. I'm not gonna... <laughs> wow. Okay. That was... Wow. But yeah, we kept this Vivian for a reason. I've survived an apocalypse. I will and our opponent's like, nope, we're done. That was a really cool deck from our opponent. But yeah, so as you can see, this deck is decent in one-on-one. -on -one. Now, before for the end of the video, we're going to show what it's like against a standard match. And hang on, I'm going to have to scroll for this. There we go. first this is a risky keep but i do like the factor that we have the temple of malady so i think it's a keep we're hoping we scry into a good two drop but worst case scenario we do have the murderous rider to just be used as an emergency we need to answer this opponent's threat more or less but we're first needing to see what our opponent's playing But yeah, our plan is we play the Temple of Malady, we scry, we hope we draw into something like a 2-drop that we can do. If not, then we can just play the Castle Lock right now, so then when we play the Forest, we have the Murderous Rider online, just in case if we need to answer a problematic card. Here's Downfall on a creature. Very good card design. Do we want a second Innkeeper? A part of me wants to say yes, because it could help us if our other one gets killed, but I think we toss that just so that we can get another creature. Yet again, we were going to let this land enter and tap anyway, so we're going to do a second Temple of Malady. There's a Foulmire Knight. We're going to keep that on top. The temptation is to play the Edgewall Innkeeper, but we don't know if they're playing, like, Disfigure. So, we're going to be cautious. So yeah, it looks like they're playing blue-black. So, what we're going to do is play... Honestly, we can just play the Castle Lock Brain Tap. Because what we're doing is we're going to play the Innkeeper. And then we're going to play the Falmire Knight, which helps us draw a card. Make our opponent faints we're doing the Gagari Adventure shenanigans. My guess now is if they're playing blue-black... They could be playing Gritsis, or just blue-black in general, or Esper, so maybe Esper stacks? Maybe. Mortify. Okay, so we're just gonna, gonna play this, play the Questing Beast then. Just attack in. So, it could be Esper Control, it could also just be Esper Stacks. We'll see in a minute. Okay, Thief of Sanity shenanigans. Well, nope. We did not want our stuff stolen, thank you very kindly. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. We're gonna attack in. And our opponent said, I'm guessing they didn't have a good hand 
So it looks like they're playing Esper Control. With that being the case, that's an interesting sideboard. I think the Duresses are necessary. I think we can keep the Fractured Brontotons in the side at the moment since we don't know if they're Esper Stacks. And we can use Vivian to pull it out if necessary. I am tempted to put in the Noxious Grass still because if they're playing Esper then they might be playing Teferi. Leyline the Void I don't think is necessary yet. On the other hand, if they are playing Esper Stacks, then that could be just a possibility just to be cautious. Anyway, we're going to cut 1-1 one, one of that. Down 1. Got to turn... Actually, I'm going to cut down the Freight Hinge in this case. Here's the thing. I think I'm going to put it in because there is a teeny little possibility that could also be Blue-Black Reanimator. And I would rather try to sideboard against that. So I think I'm going to take the Cauldrons out and just put in these tech cards and the Great Hinge. Put in the Leyline of the Void. Just by the very slim chance that they're like a Black-Blue Reanimator deck. It's a slim chance. It's a the way I look at it this way, once we realize that they're not Esper Stacks or any reanimator-based strategies, then we can just uh, sideboard them out for the for the last game. That's the way I'm looking th at that. That's okay. Decent hand. We do have the two drop. We have Temple of Malady to scry. We can keep this, and we have the Murderous Rider to answer any threat. We're gonna keep Falmire at Knight on top. Ah, uh, this is, I'm guessing, Esper Discard. I've seen Black-White Discard. I have not seen Esper Discard. Huh. But it seems like they're using the Prince here just to scry, which, that's fair. Scrying is very nifty with that card. So I think what I'm going to do here is just play another Temple of Malady. We'll keep that on top. Play out the Falmire Knight, just as a blocker. And if they want to waste removal on it, then we're solid. And if they want to use Teferi to bounce it to our hand, we don't even mind that either. So, they're going to Fod Erasure. That's what we suspected. We're going to see what they take out. I'm going to guess the Assassin's Trophy, but I could also see an argument for Murderous Rider. The Assassin's Trophy. Expected that. Going to see if they decide to attack. They decide not to attack. Okay, in that case... I'm just going to hold up the Murderous Rider. And if they try to fodder ratio us again to take the Murderous Rider out, then we'll just Murderous Rider the Charming Prince. Well, there's Teferi. Trust me. You'll thank me later. The one catch-22 is we can't murder us right now, the Teferi, because, well... Because that's static effect. So, yeah. They hit us for two. We're just going to say no... Okay, misplay there. What I should have did is play the land first, that way it would have black mana up for the Falmire Knight. That was a misplay on my part. We still don't know what their deck design is. It feels like Esper stacks, but I'm not 100% sure. There's the Thief. Huh, that's going to be hard. I guess what I'm going to do is just play out the Murderous Knight. Then play out... Do we have anything in the graveyard we're going to use? And then play out this. 
Because if they destroy both the creatures, we will at least then have a chump blocker for any secondary or third FIFA sanity triggers. The good news is if we draw into a land, we can actually cast the Leon the Dreadhorde General for the sack. Presuming they don't hold up counter magic, yada yada yada, etc, etc. Okay, so... Oh, that's actually a new effect that's actually pretty cool. I didn't notice that. They have the hands grasping the deck and such. That's actually a nice little static effect. Anyway, so Edgeworth Keeper and Orzhov Enforcers in the graveyard. Let's see, are they going to use our card against us? No, they're just going to play Teferi. Right again. Bouncing the Depth Touch. Well, Fair enough. Can we get a land? So we get Luliana. Not exactly what I wanted, but it works. Okay, so we're going to block like that. That we don't mind, actually, because then we can just block the Death Touch. Okay, so we got done with two Teferis. We're going to play our own Knight of the Ebon Legion, because then it gets counter. Hmm. So, yeah, it looks like just your maybe an Esper midrange deck. That appears to be the case. So yeah, they're going to swing in two again. Try to get a card from us. They don't want our Vivian, surprisingly enough. So then what did they got if they didn't want the Vivian? Maybe a murderous rider, if I have to make a guess. Well, nevertheless. Ugh, still not close. So what we're gonna do here is alter the fate. Bring back the innkeeper. And then we're going to see if they had a murderous rider holding up. Nope, just a mortify. There's that murderous rider. Okay, so no damage happens. I'm gonna play an innkeeper. And just draw a card. Nice! Then we can play Death Touch. Draw a card. Nice. Mostly I'm just trying to dig into my deck for heal. Land, try to get the Liliana out, which we did got the land, so now we can play Liliana next turn. Unfortunately, we can't block with the Order of Midnight, so they're going to steal into our deck a little bit more. That's a little annoying, but not the end of the world, actually. 
Okay, so they played one of our knights. Fair enough. We're gonna play a Liliana. If I were you, I'd just surrender. Rise and shine. Well, let's see if they stole another murderous rider from us. Because if they did, or if they have their own, they would use it right about now. Ah, uh, they're doing the protection from black. Eh, yeah, clever move, opponent. Clever move. Do not ruin my dress. Well, on the bright side, that doesn't mean they can play out the Thief of Sanity this turn unless they have a land in hand, so... Okay, so we're gonna play this out. Pretty close. Okay, there's question piece. That's annoying, but but honestly. attack like that. We're gonna block. 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 Like that. And if they do any god willing shenanigans, then we can just at least on our upkeep, just We'll discard a swamp.
-hmm. We're gonna wait. Sure. What a dress. Called it on the reanimator shenanigans. So we've seen that, so we're just going to minus four. Sacrifice this, sacrifice that. Make them sacrifice. We're going to get some card draw out of it. We're going to use our favorite passage, sacrifice favorite passage. Get ourselves a forest. Lay a line at the void. And honestly, we're just going to play the innkeeper. And just play out the death touch and just draw a card. Doing out with this deck. Awesome sauce. And we even got a pack out of it. That's nifty. Anyway, I'll end the video for tonight. I'm just going to show off this deck. I should have a deck list within the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed the shenanigans. We haven't really seen much of Raska Swarm Inminus other than a little game in the first game, but I've been having fun with this deck. You can do some tweets if you want to to the deck to accommodate to your budget within Arena. I hope you all have a lovely day. This is Lev Death, signing out.